Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're getting in our time machine called Luminar 4, and we're going back in time and creating this really cool nostalgic image. We're going to be using a lot of different tools inside of Luminar 4, so without any further ado, let's go back in time. I'm going to leave a link for this image in the description below in case you want to uh, work along with me here. Uh, this is going to be a fun little image to do. We're using Luminar 4 exclusively. I'm launching it from uh, Photoshop as a plugin, by the way, and I've already duplicated the background layer so we can work non-destructively. Now, I like this image because it's uh, kind of muted down, kind of has an old tone, old-fashioned tone to it already, so I thought we'd take that even further and really give it a really nice nostalgic look. So let's get started here. So we're going to come up to Filter, and we're going to come to Skylum Software, and we'll open up Luminar 4. Now the first thing we want to do in Luminar 4 is use the black and white conversion filter here. I'm going to get rid of these looks right here. So just get them out of the way. So we're going to go to the black and white conversion filter here. We're going to go to saturation. And what I want to do is just pull up on the red tones. I just want to like desaturate. There's a lot of reds in here. There's a little bit of blue in here as well. Just a very little bit. Mainly, yeah, mainly cyan. So I might just pull the cyan up a little bit. And the reds, I'm, you know, I just want to pull that back a little bit just to tone, just tone the overall look down. Now let me click this toggle here. Here's the before and here's the after. So that's the first step. Now we want to go to the creative tab and go to color styles, LUT or lookup tables. Let's open that up and we're going to choose a LUT and I, and you can, you know, hover through these and see how they interact with your image. But the one I liked was Riverside. I thought that looked really nice. And let me see here. I was I had the amount up up to around somewhere right around 40 and the contrast I'm going to take the contrast back a little bit and the saturation I'm going to pull that back a little bit to somewhere right around in there so let's take a look let's click this toggle here's the before and here's the after so that's the next step on to the dramatic filter so we're gonna we're still in the creative here tab and we're going to dramatic and let's see let's open up our advanced settings too uh, so the amount here was around a 37 see and that just pops just a little you know gives you that high contrast uh, kind of faded color look so that fades off some of that color a little bit now I don't want to get the contrast I don't want to get too much here but somewhere right around there I just want to pop a little bit of contrast in there let's take the local contrast back a little bit Maybe somewhere right around there, and maybe let's pull the amount up a little bit more. Somewhere right around there. Let's click the toggle, see where we're at so far. So it's pretty cool, right? It's given, it has that old kind of French look or something like that to me. And then the brightness, um, I brought the brightness back a little bit. Yeah, somewhere right around in there. And the saturation, I took the saturation down just a little bit here maybe somewhere right around in there I just want to maintain that old old look and let's click this toggle right here so here's the before and here's the after now let's click the eyeball so we can see where we've come from so we've come from here and we went to to this point right here so it's looking pretty cool so far now we need to come up to the layer uh, icon right here and click the plus sign and add a new adjustment layer all right, and then we're going to come down to the Creative tab, and now we want to add a texture overlay. Now we need to load up a texture, so let's click Load Texture, and that'll open up your file browser. And I'm already in the folder that I want, and I'm looking for one called Lost Void, which is this one right here. And let's just uh, click it and click Open, and that puts that texture over there. And already you can see that's going to add a nice old-fashioned nostalgic faded look to this image right here by the way when you're working with uh, textures you have these two icons right here you can flip the uh, texture horizontally or you could uh, flip it vertically by clicking these so important that you play with those because the texture might look better flipped all right and then we have blend modes here right now we're in the normal blend mode and that would work well we could just pull it back like this and that would look nice but let me double click opacity because we also have blend modes here and they really work nicely when you're using textures. So let's click on 
the blend mode drop down here and we can hover through some of these blend modes and see how they interact with our image. But I settled on luminosity. I thought that really worked well for this image. So I clicked that. That was step one. Then the second thing I did was I came here to uh, edit mask and clicked on the uh, luminosity mask right here. So when I do that, I'll click it. And what it's going to do is just add that to the lights of the image right here. So that that's looking good. That's a nice uh, little little trick there. If you don't, don't want it to go over the entire image, but just add it to either the darks or the lights. Now, if you wanted to add it to the darks, you could come up to the layer mask and right click and click invert. And you'll see it's only adding it to the dark tones. But I like it best at the light tone, so I'm going to invert it back. So right there, I think that's good. And then you could take the opacity and pull it up more if you wanted more, or you could pull it back. But I think right around maybe a little less of 50, somewhere around there, right around 45 looks really nice. Now let's click this toggle. Here's the before and here's the after. So, so far, so good. Let's click the eyeball and see where we've come from. We've come from here and went to here. So I'm really happy with this so far. Now, I just want to add a little bit of smart contrast to the, the gentleman here, not to the background, because I love the faded look of the background. So we're going to come to the Essentials tab, and we're, on, we're going to go to Light, and Light is right here. And so what we want to do is take the smart contrast and start to pull it up a little bit. Don't want to go too crazy here. But I want to maintain this uh, the faded look in the background here. So what I'm going to do is go to uh, Edit Mask and get a brush. And I'm going to paint it full opacity here. And uh, I'm at 100% opacity. And I'm Paint In. And I can use the left and right bracket key to adjust my brush size. And what I'm going to do is just start to paint that smart contrast on this wonderful looking gentleman right here. He really looks awesome. So just paint away, get them painted in. I think that's his pants right down here, right to there. And it just gives him a little bit of contrast. And I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and paint on his arm right here. Okay, now if that's too much, we can take the smart contrast and we can ease it off a little bit. And it's, like I said, it's only on him. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit more. Let's see how far we come. Let's come up to the eyeball right here. Click and hold that down. There's the original image. And here's what we've done so far with this edit. I'm really happy with it. I feel his face is a little bit hot. So I think if I just come here in, in the light filter right here, or the light tool, I should say, and take the highlights and just pull those off. Remember, I have a layer mask here, so it's only going to affect the gentleman so let's pull this back a good bit here maybe somewhere right around in there see that just you know gets rid of some of the hot spots on on him right there i think that just looks better the last thing we need to do is come to vignette let's just add a little bit of a vignette to this this uh image right here so let's just take the amount and pull it back a little bit don't want to go too crazy right here, but maybe something like that. Just a nice little amount. And of course, we could adjust the size here. We can come to advanced settings and we could adjust the roundness of it. And I don't want to add any inner light to it. But let's click this toggle. Here's the before the vignette and here's the after the vignette. Now let's come back to the eyeball. Here's the before and here's the after. A fun image, nostalgic. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you were working just from Luminar, everything would be automatically saved for you. But I started out in Photoshop as a plugin. So I come here and I, I'll click Apply. And that'll bring me back into Photoshop. And give it a second or two here. Because we did a lot to this image here. And here we are back in Photoshop. So here, if I click this uh, background copy here, which is my Luminar edit, click the eyeball, there's the before and there's the after. Well, we stepped back into time. We got in the time machine of Luminar 4 and went back in time. We were able to create this really cool nostalgic looking image. Luminar 4, what a great piece of software. It's really limitless what you can do with it. So get in there, play with those filters, uh, experiment, have fun. 
Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. And also, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. Until then, happy editing.